It's way more expensive than coilovers, less reliable and hard to install. Some people even say it ruins the car. But once you get it, your car can go from a daily driver to a slim piece of art with the push of a button. And that is the coolest sh air suspension. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how air suspension works and what you need to install one on your car. So what is air suspension? Air suspension, just like coilovers, have shock absorbers. I've already done a video on coilovers and shock absorbers. I suggest you go ahead and watch that just so we're on the same level. Link in the description and up there. But anyways, in a coilover, you have a coil spring over the shock absorber. In air suspension, instead of the metal coil spring, you have an air spring, which is technically just a rubber bag filled with air. And that's why some bros call them bags. The less air in the air springs, the lower the ride. The more air in the air springs, the higher the ride. Simple enough. That means you can lower or raise your car whenever you want by adjusting the air volume inside your air springs. So how do you install them? Great question. The air struts, they're just installed like coilovers in your car. Except when you install coilovers, you're done. Drive off and have a good time. But there's a lot more that goes into installing air suspension. A whole bunch of other stuff is needed to make this whole thing work. It's not just a set of struts. But don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through the basics here. It should give you a good sense of what you're gonna be dealing with. Let's start with the easy part, the struts we just talked about. The air struts usually come with the leader lines. These are air lines usually attached directly to the air spring. They provide a passage of pressurized air to and from the air springs. That air pressure comes from an air tank, which is usually mounted in the trunk. Because where else are you gonna put it? The glove box? The air tank is like a battery for your air spring. That means if your tank is empty, you can't raise the air pressure inside your air springs, you can't raise your car back up. So you also need a source of air to maintain the air pressure inside your tank. An air pump. Now depending on the kit, the car, or the size of the air tank, you might need more than one pump to keep up with the demand. Now we get to the brain of the whole thing. The manifold. This can control the air pressure of each air spring individually by opening and closing a bunch of electronically controlled valves. Some manufacturers package the manifold and the electronic controller in one unit, which does make things easier and a bit more compact. The manifold and the electronic controller work together. If the air pressure needs to be raised, a valve is opened to let air pressure from the tank to go to the air spring. And if it needs to lower the pressure, the exhaust valve is open, which lets air out of the air spring. The controller is also responsible for maintaining the air pressure inside the air tank by switching the air pump on and off when needed. Next is a user interface for the controller. This is just an interface so you can adjust the air springs and height. Push up a button and you drop that thing on the frames like no problem. Okay, now that all the components are in, you need to plumb everything up. So you're gonna need a whole bunch of air lines. The inner diameter of your air lines usually dictate how fast the air volume inside your air springs change. The larger the diameter, the quicker the car is lowered or raised. Simple. You need an air line from every leader line to the manifold, an air line from the air tank to the manifold, and an air line from the pump to the tank. You also need to sort out where the exhaust air line is gonna go from the manifold. Good. Now you need to wire everything up for power. You need a fused power line from your car's battery to the controller's wire harness and the air pump. The user interface is usually just pre-wired to the controller or the kit just comes with the appropriate connections. Some fancy kits don't even have a user interface. You just use your phone. So that whole thing, pretty easy. And that's about it. Keep in mind, every kit is gonna be different. For example, some kits come with height sensors that need to be wired and properly installed. Also, every application is gonna require some creativity when it comes to mounting and installing all these components. <coughs> Kitchen floor. Now you should have a good sense of what goes into an air suspension kit and its installation. Is it worth it? Honestly, I think if you're going for the show car thing and you have the money, it's definitely worth it. But I don't know, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. If you dig this kind of content, subscribe. I'll make more videos if I know people are gonna watch it. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Emzopires and thanks for watching.